Well, he uh, has been with us a number of times now over the last several months, and I do have to say I'm, I'm very uh, appreciative of the time that uh, he has shared with us and uh, all the different uh, points of knowledge that he has uh, pointed us to and shared with us as well. His experience, his background, his knowledge at, uh, has certainly educated our listening audience throughout southeastern North Carolina. Uh, he has been out, as I've said earlier in his introduction today, earlier in the show, uh, former Congressman Joe DeGuardi has been out. He uh, continues to speak to uh, business schools, uh, students, the next generation, uh, to business professionals. Uh, and his uh, one of his latest uh, presentations is the debt bomb and the fiscal unsustainability of the West. And I asked him if he would please come back and continue our discussion here and continue to educate and inform us on this terrible, terrible threat to the future of America. Former Congressman Joe DiGuardi. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Curtis. I appreciate it. As I, I truly sincerely mean that. Thank you uh, for all the time you've been taking with us these last several months. You know, there's a new set of charts out, uh, not unlike charts we've seen from the Heritage Foundation, seen from you and others, about just uh, how massive uh, this debt I uh, is uh, that we have now incurred and will be incurring. Uh, to me, uh, Joe, and I know we've talked about this, but it, it is, I mean, truly just exactly what you say. It's a debt bomb. This isn't, a you know, another political uh, football to kick around and, and oh, you know, uh, uh, there they go fighting again. No, this could bring down America, bring us down to our knees. And I personally, maybe we're almost three quarters of the way to our knees. Hey, I was thinking like that 20 years ago when I wrote the book, Unaccountable Congress. It didn't, it doesn't add up. And I put my voting card on the cover. I said this on your show a number of times. It's a plastic card, the same size as your credit card. And I called it the most expensive credit card in the world, a congressman and a congresswoman's voting card, because it has no real limit. The debt ceiling just gets raised willy nilly. It's been done that way for years and years. It's only now that people are paying attention to the fact that we have a debt ceiling. But uh, it, it doesn't take too much, apparently, uh, to go over it. And now we're uh, heading for $16 trillion by the end of this year. One of the things that has to happen after this election is the debt ceiling comes up again, and we'll go over $16 trillion. Yeah. When is it going to stop? Listen, you uh, have uh, – I know you were concerned, and you want to be back on your show because the estimate for Obamacare got doubled by the uh. Congressional Budget Office. And, and, and that is probably where we should start. Uh, that's the micro or one of the examples of why my book is true and, and why people have to start paying attention to the numbers. Uh, what the Congressional Budget Office does is it estimates on a 10-year time frame what the cost of our government will be. Now, they're on the cash basis. It's not like we're dealing with a publicly traded company in which you have stock and you have the Securities and Exchange Commission. You have outside auditors come in and you need to issue a, fi a financial report. Everybody sees, no, this is the Congressional Budget Office paid by the Congress. You have the Office of Management and Budget paid by the Obama administration, and they're both on the cash basis, which means you can manipulate the numbers. Let me give you the example on Obamacare, because everybody was shocked uh, just last week when the cost of Obamacare was pretty much doubled. The initial cost mm -hmm. by the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, was $940 billion over 10 years. When that came out several years ago, I said, that can't be. I, I, I don't see that, uh, you know, that, that this thing can could be, it, it's got to be more than that. In fact, Obama was estimating that it would be uh, budget neutral, and they were saying it was 940. Mm -hmm. Now we find out that the cost they're estimating over this 10-year uh, screen that they use is $1.76 trillion. That's almost $1.8 trillion, double what it was before. How could that happen? Well, you know, I got a copy of a report. I think I sent it to you by Congressman Richard Nugent from Central Florida, and uh, he hit it right on the head. He said, accounting gimmicks for one have caused this. What does he mean? Well, when you have this 10-year time frame, what you do is you try to project what the cost and what the income is. But since Obamacare didn't start, doesn't start until 2014, if it starts at all, by the way, as you know, it's in the Supreme Court uh, as mm -hmm. we speak, yeah. uh, that means that you, 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 when, when you started this thing to estimate back in 2010, uh, what you did is you only had six years of expenses in that 10-year frame. 
But what they did is they fronted the income. So they're matching 10 years' worth of income over 10 years to begin with, the 2010, 2020, against the six years. But now you move the screen because now we're into 2012, so now we have to count eight years. When you get to 2014, you're going to have the full 10 years to match against the 10 years they started with. This is fraud. This is what they put uh, offices of publicly traded corporations and people that are on the boards of those companies. That's how they indict them for securities fraud and put them in jail, usually I mean, mm-hmm. after they get convicted. Why? Because under the real accounting system, which is called the accrual basis, and I don't want to give a course on accounting 101, but that's generally accepted accounting principles. Under that system, you've got to match income with revenue. And you can't put in 10 years of revenue and six years of expenses. Uh, if you're going to have six years of expenses, you've got to estimate what the revenue would be for that six years. So this is how we get to accounting gimmicks. And this is just one example. Yeah, that's right. The this one is... that Congressman Nugent points out that i got to mention yeah. is that they came up with long-term health care as part of Obamacare. But in long-term health care, you don't experience the insurance claims until later on. It's long-term, way beyond the 10-year frame. So what they did is they estimated what are the premiums are going to uh, receive in the 10 years. They put those in with no expenses. So this is the way government is working today. And, Curtis, that's why I had to use this example, because this is – uh, this applies to everything that you're seeing right. about the government debt and the government deficits. They do not use the right accounting system. Therefore, when they tell you the government debt is $16 trillion, which is going to be by the end of this year, no, they're lying. That's the Treasury bills we've issued. What about you know the accruals? What about the estimates of the expenses that have to be put in for Social Security and Medicare so that we know the real obligations that we face uh, you know, coming up. So that's just one way I, I can describe it. So Obamacare is going to be much, much more expensive than anybody has ever estimated. Hopefully it'll be gone after the Supreme Court session.